All right, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Bobby Simmons is in the building. Welcome to the show. And as you can see in here, in the place to be, sitting directly next to me, ladies and gentlemen, it is the one and only Honey Cocaine in the building. Hello. <laughs> I'll clap for myself, too. Oh, yeah. What's up, give, guys? That's right. Give it up for yourself. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Honey Cocaine is in the building. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much. You are in New York City doing what you do, traveling it up, and I'm glad that you took the moment to come down to say what's yeah. up to me here. Let me just let you know real quick before we get into this interview, Bobby know you. Bobby mean, mean know your work. Don't think Bobby don't know your hustle and what uh-huh. you've been doing. Uh-huh. So I'm, I'm very much a supporter. And, uh, Thank you, man. And, and looking forward to a lot of more things that you're getting ready to do. We're going to get to that in a few minutes. Okay. But first of all, how have you been? You know you disappeared for a minute. People yes, was I looking did. for you. Yes. Um, give us a reason why you disappeared. Um. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. Um, just real life shit, you know. Oh, no, no, kid, kid. No, no. Okay, okay. You in New York? You in okay, Brooklyn? Okay. This is Brooklyn house. Yeah, you know, just just real life shit, and um, I kind of just wanted to walk away for a little bit, just you know, for mental health reasons and right, stuff okay. like that. You know, it became a little bit overwhelming. All you know, the fame part that really comes with it, and. It kind of just took a little negative turn, like all the stuff that was just going down in the media. Right. And I just wasn't feeling it. Like, I'm not here, you know. I felt like I wasn't here to be a part of that. But, um, you know, just for the sake of my mental health, I had to take a little breather, mm-hmm. kind of travel the world a little bit. Oh, okay. And um, just redirect myself, you know what I'm saying, like onto a brighter path. Right. So, now, because, now, you know, the music industry, I always tell people when, once they get involved into this whole music thing, it really takes a toll on you, especially yeah. when it comes at you at, at rush speed. And that's what happened. Ex- exactly. Yeah. Um, so you feel that now you're at a, a good place where you can come in? Because right now, the music industry is still turned up a lot more, uh-huh. you know, and, and you coming back in, does this set you up to prepare yourself to say, okay, now nah, I'm, I'm at a good space and pace, so yeah. nobody's in my way? No, that's exactly what it is. Mm. I mean... You know, the past few years that I've been gone, in a sense, um, I got to learn a lot, not only about the music industry and the business side, but just a lot about myself and my craft and, you know what I'm saying, like just creating music in general. So yeah, definitely a lot more confident, a lot more comfortable, a lot more educated, and you know, the fire in me burns even more now. Right, right, right. Now, give everybody a little background of of, of, of how you actually got involved. Because some people are watching and listening right now. Yeah. And they're saying, okay, well, I mean, uh, she looks familiar. Who the familiar. hell is that? Right, right. You know, she looks yeah. familiar or whatever, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. give everybody your background because I know actually how you act how you got started in mm. into the music business. Um, some people probably caught you during the time that when you were touring and uh, you actually did a, a duet, a project with uh, with Tyga. Yeah. Um, so give us, give, why don't you give us your story yeah. how you actually got involved in, into this whole hip-hop game? Yeah, so um, when I was 10 years old, I started, you know, writing poetry and engineering my own songs and ripping beats off online. I was heavy on the MySpace stuff. That turned into YouTube. Mm. So when I was about 18, 19 years old, you know, I just, I was like, man, fuck school. Mm-hmm. You know, but you should stay in school. Oh, no, no, no. Dad. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I was just kind of <laughs> over it. I was skipping a lot and I was just going to the studio down the street, AKA mm-hmm. the microphone in the closet. Right, 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 right. You know, the trap. <laughs> and, um, you know, like, I, I was just making music all day long, every single day. Like, and I heard Tyga's Rack City. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh my God, this bumps. <laughs> like, this stupid bumps. Like, right. Like, I'll eat this shit up. <laughs> so I went on YouTube, searched the instrumental, and ripped that shit, recorded on it. Next day, um, my friend with the camera just pulled up. I'm like, yo, let's shoot a video. Mm. Please don't search that video. <laughs> don't watch it. Let's search for the video, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> it's still there. I'm, like, trying to get that shit down, but it's still there. But, um, yeah, and that was maybe, you know, five years ago. Mm. And Tyga, he was on tour with Chris Brown, and he was in Toronto, and he was on Twitter, just surfing, I guess. And he probably came across that, and he hit me up. Right. And I was in a studio at the trap, and I was like, yo, someone with a blue check mark just DM'd me. Mm. And it was like, yo, I'm in your city. Let's meet up and talk business. And I met up with him the same night. He's like, yo, man, get a passport. Let's go on tour with Chris. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, oh, shit, I got to go home and tell my parents they're going to be on some... Oh no, you cannot drop out of school. What are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> right, right, right. And that's what they were on. Right, and right, I was right. like, listen, like you guys have seen me like the past ten years. Like this is all I do. I don't even go outside and play. Mm. Like me recording is me playing. Like as that's 
what makes me happy. Now, now, actually, how cool is that to have him uh, to call you and say, let's go out on the road? Now, like you said, you know, speaking, we don't want other kids who's listening to to drop out of school, you uh-huh. know, as well. We definitely, uh, education is a must and it's important. Course. Cool thing about, you know, you speaking of education, your education is what you went through as far as this exactly. business is concerned. So you actually taught yourself so yes. that you can survive in this game. Exactly. Um, t- first of all, tell everybody where you're from because some people don't know exactly where you're I'm from. I'm from Toronto. Okay. Right and to six. Right. And you're actually, you're, you're, you're Asian. Are you, are you a mix of, of, of a descent? I am, yeah. Okay. My mom is Vietnamese and Chinese, and okay. my dad's Indian and Thai, but okay. they're born in Cambodia. Right, okay. So my whole life, um, you know, the Cambodian language, culture, music, food, everything, right. that's our heritage. Right. So, so, so I'm so, an Asian mutt. So, <laughs> yeah. so how, did, how did you get involved? Uh, what, what gave you the bug uh, for hip-hop? Because I always ask people just to know exactly the di- direction they would like to go musically. Uh-huh. You know, because I'm just saying for me, if you know, a, a former hip-hop artist, rapper myself, that I kind of look at other people work and say, you know what, I want to not, I, I want to go in that path. I don't want to do what they do, but go mm-hmm. in that path because it's really about the art of the work yeah. and about the flash. Tell us uh, uh, about your art of work. What made you say, you know, he or she made me want to get in this game. Either I surpassed them or I'm riding with them. Yeah. I'm um, sorry, I really need a burp. Go ahead. I'm holding it in, um, but it's not going to come out because everyone's looking at me. You can burn but, all you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, great. no, that's a great question. And, um, you know, when I was a kid, I actually lived in Montreal when I was five years old. Mm-hmm. So growing up before five years old, my parents, you know, they're immigrants. Right. So they were just learning English, too. So the 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 language in the house would be Cambodian. Right. Right. So all I knew was Cambodian. And then I lived in Montreal, the French speaking part, and I started to learn French. Mm. But... When I was living in Montreal, that's when I first heard Tupac's music. Wow, okay. I didn't even know what the hell he was saying. I was maybe seven, eight years old. Mm -hmm. My uncles, you know, hood-ass motherfucking Cambodians Mm -hmm. from Montreal, French thugs, you know (laughs) what I'm saying? We're just listening to that. And I just felt it. Like, I never forgot the first time I heard Tupac's album playing Mm -hmm. in the house. And just me as a kid, I was like, yo, this is crazy. I don't know what I'm feeling, but I'm feeling something. Right. And then when I finally ended up moving to Toronto... You know, learning English and all that stuff. Um, by the way, I'm not an immigrant. Like, I didn't know English because I knew French. Right, right, right. You know, but um, so my babysitter, my parents would just drop us off to our cousin in the hood. She was she was a trash-ass babysitter. <laughs> she would just sit us down in front of BT. Uh, and I'd just be there like, yo, like, this is crazy. Mm. Fast forward a year or two later, I'm engineering my own music. Wow. Just spitting, yeah. Freestyling so- on the streets. So I mean, this is just natural for you, yeah, you know. Just yeah, like yeah. It, it, you rarely get that in any with any artist today, because uh-huh. everything is so it's, it's so prepped. Uh, what's the word I want to use for it? It's 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 not as organic mm-hmm. as we expected. The way that whether it's your singer or musician or a rap artist, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not putting nobody down. I'm just saying it's yeah. hard for me to watch certain rappers today because they don't seem as organic. Hearing you speak the way that you've taught yourself yeah. about music in general and just mm-hmm. being such a huge fan of hip hop, yeah. um, it, it shows me that your, your work is definitely getting ready to stretch in many places. You've been recording a lot. Your work is out there. People can go online and find your work yep. a lot. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about the new project that you got now which is called One Time right? Um, no it's called No Time. No Time I'm sorry. No <laughs> honestly it was called One Time and I always say that it's uh-huh. so confusing but no this is a it's a single that I, I put out on YouTube mm-hmm. so there's a video it's a song um, and it's called No Time you can find it anywhere just type in Honey Honey C Honey Cocaine No Time and um, yeah that I feel like that's really a warm up record to what I'm really about to do mm-hmm. um, past few months I've been out here in New York New Jersey and uh, recording, um, you know, not with a project in mind per se, but, you know, just hitting the studio every night for like two, three months and, right. you know, just getting some stuff off my chest and just getting creative. Right. And I haven't been able to do that in, you know, the last few years that I've been on a hiatus, mm-hmm. quote unquote. But, um, yeah, so no time. Like, I really feel like that's an anthem for the females. You know, I feel like women who, you know, normal women just – nine to five or students, whatever it is you do in life, like everyone is working, right. everyone is grinding, everyone is on their, you know, at their own pace going somewhere going somewhere in life. And I feel like we're just missing some anthems. Right. And, and, and also real quick before we get out of here too, is that you also run your own company because I'm, I, I'm also learning, I'm asking you, I can get the answer from you now, mm-hmm. is that you just decided to say, you know what, it's not that I'm not interested in a major company deal, uh-huh. but you know, this is my baby. I'm pregnant with this yeah. child. This is yeah. mine. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Don't need no welfare. Pregnant is a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, know, you know, but this is your child. This is your yeah, baby, yeah. you know, and you want to oversee it right. Of course. I mean, I have nothing against, 
you know, major labels or anything like that. Like, I really do feel like a partnership with the label is my goal. Right. Mine and my team's. But it just never really happened. And, you know, we're capable of doing so much independently this day and age that we're just running with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's successful and we're building our value at the end of the day. And that's my advice to any artist, especially independent artists, is like, do as much as you can first on your own. Right. Build your value so you don't get stuck in some shitty deal. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm yes. not opposed to a deal, but it has to be a good deal. It has to be a right deal. Right. You, you know? Some do it one way, you you have your way. Yeah. And it's not, it's not, nobody's way is, well, some people's way is wrong, but everybody yeah, yeah. just got their way I of mean, doing like, it. you know, the labels are going to bring something major to the table. What are you going to give them? Exactly. If they got to do all the work, well, fuck you. Exactly. Take the 360. Take. But if you've done your groundwork and you know what you're doing and you built it up yourself. Reap the benefits. It's a partnership. It's a handshake. Exactly. Versus, there you go. You know what I'm saying? On your own. Yeah. <laughs> well, I tell you what, real quick, please tell everybody where they can actually go to uh, log on to hear your music, purchase the music, or even find your just just Honey C brand or all over, please. Yeah, so on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, what else is there? I mean, guess everything. It would be um the handle would be Queen Honey C. Mm. Queen Honey C. Yes, Queen Honey C. C mm. like whatever you want it to be. Okay, Cat. now now before I close out, yeah. Honey cocaine. Uh huh. How'd you get it? Shit, remember that trap studio I was telling you about? Uh huh. So I guess we were just smoking weed one day on a Wednesday at 4 p.m. probably. Uh huh. And it was like, yo, man, I always had blonde hair. Uh -huh. I've been dying my hair since like 12 years old. Okay. My mom hates me for that. But I always had blonde hair and we're just sitting there high as shit. And it was like, yo, man, we need a cool name for you. You know, my dad, every time he would pick me up from the studio, he'd be outside the window like, honey, I'm here, mm -hmm. let's go. Mm -hmm. So honey was a name, a nickname. We're like, yo, honey cocaine. The room went quiet, and we're like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> Sweet and addicting. There you go. Sweet and addicting. <laughs>